I'm going to let you feel what that feels like. It's not every day you get an art lesson from a renowned potter. Look at that, amazing. Really? Actually, I like the way he's got a little yeah, flip in his tail. Flip there. In, his tail. <laughs> in this Bridgewater, Vermont workshop, Miranda Thomas and her team craft pottery that has been gifted to popes and politicians. Across the parking lot in a historic mill, Thomas's husband, Charles Shackleton, makes high-end, highly prized furniture. Pottery and furniture are actually really symbiotic in your daily life, and that's what we're about. Perfection is important to us, but it's not the one major goal. The major goal is to make it feel like a human being was there. Everything at Shackleton Thomas is handmade. Furniture is custom designed and pottery is painted freehand. This is cobalt oxide. It'll fire blue at 2360 degrees. So whether a mug fits your lips, how it feels like to hold, you know, whether the surface of the table is lovely to touch, the arm of your chair, all those things are what are really important to us. Shackleton, who grew up in Ireland, met Thomas at art school in England. I had a car crash, nearly died, and I thought, okay, you've only got one life. You know, this is when I was 19. What are you gonna do with it? His goal, to create a place for artisans to saw and sculpt. After moving to the U.S. and working at Simon Pierce Glassware in nearby Queechy, the couple raised a family and built their business. So every single one of those little fish are going to have a completely different mm. character. And people think, you know, we're cuckoo bananas, maybe because we're thinking so much about an object, whereas most people, you know, an object's just an object. But they think a lot about their watch and their shoes and the handbag. We would like to see people attach a little bit more importance to what they use every day. That philosophy is now a family creed. You can see something come from paper, you know, into real life, which is amazing. The couple's son, Hugh, has joined the company. By the way, that last name, Shackleton? Charles is a cousin of Ernest Shackleton, the Antarctic explorer whose ship, the Endurance, sank in 1915. The ship sank and he has a number, a number of other failures <laughs> attached to his name, which you never hear about, but he did get all 27 men out, plus himself. On March 5th, 2022, 100 years to the day after Ernest Shackleton's funeral, the endurance was discovered. Marine archeologists with the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust found the ship nearly 10,000 feet below the Weddell Sea. The family was elated. There is a shield, like a crest, for the Shackleton family, and that says Fortudine Vincimus, by endurance we conquer. And that's why Shackleton called his ship uh, Endurance. It's a great motto for life, but I would hope that our life is a little bit more cheerful than just enduring it. Optimism is true moral courage, which is another quote of Shackleton's, and we definitely live by that. Many creative minds are drawn to Windsor County. Aspiring photographers flock to the town of Pomfret, home to one of the most Instagrammed places in Vermont. Sleepy Hollow Farm, mobbed during foliage season. Painter Wimby Hoyt captures these scenes and more at his gallery and studio in Heartland. I'm calling this Flight from the Storm, because they're, they're coming in from the Outer Islands. Hoyt moved to the area in the 1970s after studying art at Yale. I think I decided it would be my primary career pretty early, before it was practical. <laughs> when I came up to Vermont, I lived in a commune with a bunch of other friends, and I did carpentry, self-taught. And he painted and painted. Today, his work is sought after by collectors who prize a painting style known as photographic realism. This is November 7th, and we had just built a new kitchen. Hoyt's house is a favorite subject. We'd had a dinner party the night before, and a friend had brought over a bunch of apples from his apple tree, and the light and the flowers that caught my eye. One of the greatest challenges for any visual artist, capturing light, is a process that requires constant practice, says Hoyt. By failing <laughs> and trying again, I put dots down, and when they dry, I take a, 
a brush that doesn't have very much paint on it and I sort of rub it ar around the dot so that it makes sort of a blurry halo. I mean, it helps that it's beautiful here. <laughs> it makes finding subject matter a lot easier. So beautiful. And back to Miranda Thomas. She says that handiwork is often deeply tied to culture and region, and historians and archaeologists often use this or have been using this for years to learn more about people. And her husband Charles says that, you know, nobody really asked him about the Shackleton name until he came to America. In the UK, it really wasn't that big a deal. But he says Americans seem really fascinated with Ernest Shackleton's story of, of perseverance and leadership. Uh, during his ordeal in the Antarctic. So now the name certainly rings a bell.